that are right off the kind of the top of my head. And again, hopefully they're educational for you and you enjoy them. If you want to listen to our full set of podcasts, do me a favor. All you got to do is go over to our website and get our mobile app. If you get our mobile app, it's free, FastTrackSystem.com, F-A-S-T-T-R-A-X-S-Y-S-T-E-M.com. Of course, you can also go to NEC Chat, that's N-E-C-C-H-A-T.com, and get it as well. Our mobile app not only has calculators and a chat feature to interact with other um, app members, uh, but you also get access to the podcast directly from uh, the mobile app. So that's an easy, quick way to get you know our podcast of course you couldn't listen to us on all of your popular search channels uh well i shouldn't say search your podcast channels that would be like spotify spreaker google podcast apple podcast deezer spreaker any of those just search for master the nec uh, and you will be able to get our podcast and we have literally over a thousand episodes that you can listen to all different types of topics uh, also, lastly, you can listen to just the Let's Ask Paul sessions um, over at the paulabernathy.com website, and that is the location where you can submit questions to me uh, if you have any questions on something that just, you know, sticks in your mind. You're just like, damn it, I need it. I want an answer. I need an answer. I need somebody else's opinion that I can trust. Well, there you go. I serve on Code Panel 5 and 17. I've been doing this for 34 years plus. Um, I serve on ASTM committees, UL committees, um, NEMA committees. Uh, this is kind of what I do. Uh, I've been electrician, master electrician in multiple states for uh, over three decades. Uh, and I've got the cuts and scars to prove it. I was in business for myself. I worked with other people. I have owned my electrical contracting businesses. Uh, I have sold electrical contracting businesses. I've worked with my brother developing electrical contracting businesses. So I've been there, done that. Uh, I just don't uh, go and create content and never walk the walk. I have done it before. Now, do I do it anymore? Hell no, I'm too old for that. But things haven't changed, folks. Okay, You still pull cable the same way. You still run conductors. You still use the NEC. So look, it, it stop this crap about what do you do now? Just because you've been some conduit and you're pretty at it doesn't make you a better electrician than anybody else. So get over it, all right? We're all learning the code together. So with that said, one of the questions that came to me was, Paul, can you ex- uh, give a, a high-level view of, I don't know if you said it that way, a high over, I think he said like a 30,000-foot view of MC versus AC cable and what's the difference? Uh, because... And, and you know, and, and he list, is an avid listener to the podcast. So I said, absolutely. Darlene actually forwarded this one to me for this morning. So I, you know, over a bunch of other ones. So I said, you know, hey, we can do that. So many of you that are new into the industry or have been in the last 10, 15 years are probably not even familiar with AC cable. And you think that all armored cables are the same, right? Um, you're used to working with MC, which is a metal clad available in steel or aluminum armor. But you're probably not even familiar with AC cable. Now, AC cable is very similar. It's an interlocked type of metal sheet uh, strip uh, that gets worked through a machine that actually has what's called a interlocking lip. And it's available in different styles, like an S style. It's in a Z pattern. It's, it's a bunch of interlocking styles you can use. Different manufacturers use different styles. And it basically creates a lip and it interlocks it as it wraps around the conductors. The conductors are pre-plexed or twisted and they run through the machine. It's called the armor. And it wraps it, puts a polymeric wrap around it or some or paper or whatever it may be, depending on the machine. And it puts that armor around it, whether it's AC cable or MC cable. Okay. Now, the standards are a little different. Okay. So, UL4... And armored cable's been around as early as, you know, 1903, folks. It's, it's been around, been been used and talked about, okay? It's been around since 1903. Of course, MC cable kind of came along after that, okay? Kind of came along a little later, but it's clearly the most uh, prominently used 
of the armored products, right, is the metal clad. Um, now, one of the limitations that you have with armored cable um, is that you can't, it only goes up to one gauge. So obviously it's not going to be used for services applications. It just doesn't have the capacity. It's, you know, you can use it for feeder applications. You can use it for branch circuit applications. Uh, it's probably the most prominent use for that is just branch circuit. Um, it has some unique characteristics in it. Um, the AC cable, which again, you, you probably have to ask for it because probably when you go to your supply house and you want, you say armor cable, or you want metal cable, uh, they're probably going to give you MC. One of the big differences that you can tell right off the bat uh, from traditional MC versus AC is it'll have brown paper wrapped around the, uh, the assembly of the conductors, okay? Brown paper. Um, now, there's a, there's a certain level of flame retardedness to this, and, and it's a basically like a, a heavy fibrous paper that is wrapped around the cable assembly part of the standard and what it does is it creates a, a separation between the conductors and the armor well that makes sense right because you know when you're bending it things like that you don't want to run the risk of of damaging the the internal conductors right makes sense um especially when you're stripping it you know you want that little extra layer of protection on the insulated conductors okay um but your sizes in ac cable are limited to up to one gauge so 14 gauge through one gauge, you can get armored cable or AC cable. Uh, been around a long time, it's UL4. It's covered in the National Electrical Code in Article 320. And you basically use it anywhere you can use MC cable, okay? But there is an advantage to AC cable. Even though it's not prominent as much as it used to be, um, AC cable is unique in the fact that the armor itself can be used as an equipment ground, right? Uh, because it has this 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 conductor strip that runs all the way through and makes intimate contact with all the convolutions, and it's inherently there as part of the creation of AC cable. Whereas MC, the traditional MC, does not have that strip, so it touches every convolution of that armor. And that creates an effective low impedance ground fault current path. So that means you don't have a separate equipment grounding conductor in there. Right? So if you use a proper fitting and you connect it to the armor before you connect it to the metal box, then what you've got is a low impedance effective ground fault current path and you're going to clear an overcurrent device. Beautiful thing, right? You don't have any extra uh, equipment ground that's inside of the cable assembly. Okay. Now, that's tradition, just regular AC cable. Whereas MC cable, you can't use the armor as the traditional MC cable. You can't use the armor as an equipment ground. So that's why you'll see an equipment ground run inside of the cable assembly. And that's because the armor doesn't have that, that strip that runs down it. Okay? It doesn't have it. So you can't use the armor. And what happens is because of the spiraling effect of it, it, it and the impedance of it, and it's not, you know, you're not bridging those convolutions like with the AC cable, then the fault current can cancel itself out or choke. And again, depending on how far away you are from the overcurrent device, it, 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 it may not trip, right? So, in that scenario, we have to add an equipment ground. So that's why you see it. Now, interesting is everybody thinks that it has to be green, but it doesn't. It can be bare. You can have a bare. And with the larger, bigger MC, typically the equipment ground is bare. Okay? And it's perfectly fine. It can be insulated or bare. It, does, it doesn't matter for the standard. Okay? Now, the standard that's used to make MC cable, that's UL1569. Obviously, numbering sequence, it came obviously much later than AC cable, right? Um, so, and, and a lot of people will confuse the old, what we hear of the word BX. Uh, they think to, that the BX is, is AC cable, and it is not. BX was an experimental product, product by General Electric that was put out. There's two different experimental products. 
BX was the one that, that people gravitated to. Uh, it was never intended for that armor in BX to be used as an equipment ground. In fact, it predates okay, when equipment grounds started being required. Okay, So yeah, does it sometimes, will it, will it fool those testers? Do people do uh, all kinds of janky things to, to try to fool three light testers and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, they do. Um, but it was never intended for BX to be used as an equipment ground, the armor. Now, later on, it progressed to where they started adding the bonding strip and everything like that, and things changed. But early on, and that's why we don't like you to confuse BX with either AC or MC. And it probably closer resembles MC in a sense that... Um, it's, the armor can't be used as an equipment ground, okay? But that's early. That's before we, we started realizing the, the significance of, of an equipment grounding conductor and overcurrent protective devices and how we had to clear them and the trip curves. And I, I mean, it's early. We've evolved, right, through years. We've evolved and learned, and wiring cable manufacturers evolve as well. Um, so now with MC cable, you're not restricted on the size. I mean, there could be MC cable that has conductors in it that are 1,000 kc mil or even larger, right? There's no limit. In fact, you're also limited with AC cable on the number of conductors that you can have in AC cable, right? So there is no limit to the number of conductors inside of MC cable. The only limitation you're gonna have is the number of current carrying conductors and in how it imp impacts the ampacity of those conductors that are in that cable. That's always gonna be a limiting factor, right? But if you oversize your conductors and your, and your load is very low after an adjustment, um, then you probably could still have a conductor that could handle the load. That, so it is. It's, it's all how you design the cable and the, what you need. But at least with the MC cable, you're not restricted. Okay? Um, so in sizing wise, whereas again, AC cable, you are restricted. Now, since MC cable requires a separate equipment ground in there, you have to have an effective low impedance ground fault current path, so you have to put an equipment ground in there. They do make an AC, uh, MC cable that is considered uh, more advanced, and that is one that has the bonding strip added to it or bonding conductor added to it. And typically, that's going to be 8 gauge or 10 gauge, depending on the size of the of the MC cable, and that's a more advanced, and that's why we call it MCI-A, right? The A is, think of it as advanced, or think of it as A for the armor being used as an effective ground fault current path, which you know that you normally can't do with traditional MC, right? So they do make an MC cable that is very similar to an AC cable when it comes to using the armor, but that's a special MC that you have to buy it. And you're gonna pay more for it, obviously, because you're getting that extra, that, that aluminum conductor that is like the bonding strip that's in the AC, but you're gonna get an actual conductor that is added to the MC, and that's what kicks it up to the next level and creates a, you know, the armor as that effective pad, right? So it's unique, um, you gotta pay more for it. Now what's interesting is, all of these products are also both AC and MC are available in what we call healthcare. Um, and everybody thinks that HCF is a listing. It's not. It's not a listing. When, when a manufacturer creates an AC cable or an MC cable, and yes, both can be HCF, it's all about creating those redundant paths that are required by 517.13 A and B if you're dealing with a patient care space. Um, so you have to have multiple paths. So this is interesting. With an AC cable, since the armor is already being used as an effective ground fault current path, what do you think we do to make it HCF? All we do is put a second path inside of the actual cable. That means we put an insulated, because 517.13 A and B requires that, an insulated equipment ground in there. And now guess what? You've got the armor path. And you got the insulated equipment ground in the cable assembly. Now you've got your two paths. So guess what? Normal AC now becomes HCF. Makes sense? So when it comes to MC cable, 
since it already is required in standard traditional MC to have an equipment ground in it. So what do you do to make it HCF? Well, first thing you do is you want to make it that advanced armor. So you put that 10 gauge aluminum uh, strip in there or conductor so it makes intimate contact with all the convolutions and you already have the insulated if that's your choice to insulate it and of course if it's healthcare you got to insulate it you already have that conductor in there so guess what now that you turn the armor in an, in an advanced MC by putting that strip in there now now that you have an armor that qualifies and you already have your equipment ground in the cable assembly guess what it becomes HCF because you've got those two paths. So you've got traditional AC cable that the armor can be used as an equipment ground and there's none in it. You got traditional MC, which has an equipment ground in it, but the armor can't be used as an effective ground fault current path. But you want to use the armor because it saves you a lot of labor, right? You don't need all those pigtails. If you go from uh, armor to a connector to a metal box, then you eliminate all these connections so that's why people are buying the more advanced MC where the armor can be used as an equipment ground because it's a labor saver. And now when you want a healthcare facility, all you do is just make sure you have the armor that qualifies as a path and you have an insulated equipment ground inside the cable assembly. Now you've got two paths. So that's how we construct the different cable assemblies. It's just as simple as adding a conductor, taking away a conductor, adding a bonding strip, taking away a bonding strip. You get what I'm saying? All right. Uh, if you want more in-depth things about construction of cables and other things like that, let me know. Let me know in the notes. Let me know in the comments. If you like these kind of podcasts that kind of talk about the different constructions and stuff like that, if you find it interesting, do me a favor, subscribe, share it with other people, and in the comments, let me know that you love. Thumbs up. Uh, let me know that you love these where I talk about the different products and their applications. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.